The internet is cool, but it's also completely broken. Mass data breaches, phishing attempts, credit card fraud, and the massive wholesale shoplifting of your own personal information happening nearly every time you visit a website. Enter blockchain, the mystical, magical solution to all of these problems and more. Here's how it works and the problems it solves. Blockchain is the answer to a question we've been asking since the dawn of the internet. How can we trust what happens online? How do we control the data we put online? In simple terms, blockchain is a distributed database that maintains a list of records. These records are called blocks. Each block contains the history of every block that came before it down to the second it was edited. In effect, you know, chaining those blocks together. Hence, blockchain. The other thing you need to know is that this whole operation is end-to-end -end encrypted. Every transaction is linked to a unique cryptographic signature that's easy to verify and nearly impossible to falsify because blockchain is maintained by a scalable network of computers often called nodes worldwide, which are in composite referred to as a blockchain network. It's a network of computers that maintain this file, right, which is an append-only log of data. and. The file itself isn't really interesting, but what's interesting is that you have all of these computers around the world that are coordinating with one another to make updates to the file in a lockstep fashion. Blockstack is a startup using the blockchain to build a new decentralized version of the internet where users control their apps, their data, and their digital identity with no third parties in the middle. It's similar to the fossil record in that you can dig down into the earth in any area in the world and you'll see that the same layers uh, occur in the earth's crust, right? The same thing happens with the blockchain where you can go back, any individual computer can go back into their own file that they have locally and it'll be identical to everyone else's file. This is one thing that we haven't really had before. We haven't had a piece of data that was synchronized in a trustless way amongst an entire network of computers. And that's the important distinction here. The fact that anything that happens only happens with total consensus across the distributed network. And that data is stored everywhere at once. That's also why you should trust blockchain, because blockchain gives you proof. Think about a basic digital transaction where Alice is sending Bill $25. To trust that exchange, what do you need? Alice needs to verify that her money went to Bill. Bill needs to receive that money from Alice and the bank needs to log that Alice is $25 poorer and Bill is $25 richer. Blockchain does this without a bank or third party service in the middle using what's called distributed trustless consensus to prove that transaction is valid. In this case, trustless means the opposite of what it sounds like. Because of proof of work, it means no trust is required. Alice and Bill can both see their whole transaction on the blockchain exactly as it occurred. Blockchain's decentralized network and immutable ledger has universal potential. Companies are already using it for everything from banking and identity to tracking assets all over the world. One of those companies is IBM. So blockchain is all about trust, um, ensuring that there's transparency, traceability, auditability, and immutability of those transactions. Uh, in particular, we're working with Walmart around food safety. Um, the solution that we're working on with them is looking to increase the transparency and traceability um, of the food supply chain. And this really provides an opportunity to accelerate the time in which uh, an outbreak may occur from days and weeks down to seconds. You know, this solution in, has hopes of actually eliminating uh, an estimated 30% of food waste across the food supply chain. Another company IBM is working with is Everledger, a startup using blockchain to track and reduce fraud in the global diamond industry. An example of an asset here is the diamond. How can you track and trace the history of that diamond, whether it be the cut, the clarity, the cost, who owns the diamond itself? You actually can have that validation or verification of where the diamond came from so that you can determine that it is from a conflict-free zone. One of the coolest things that blockchain can be used for in the future, and this is the one that really blows people's minds, is a decentralized internet. Cue Silicon Valley joke. But seriously, same idea, better execution. A new internet that runs decentralized versions of all the apps we use today and where you can do a whole lot more. So imagine if all the most essential services you use today, things like Amazon, Venmo, Uber, and Facebook, were protocols, open source frameworks, instead of being owned and operated by a singular corporate entity. You can think about an Uber, right, that's decentralized. You no longer have those 20 to 30% cuts right in the middle. Uh, it also means that you have a high level of competition. So imagine if Uber and Lyft and Juno were all on the same network and were competing 
for those fees, right? So think about you have Facebook, right? Maybe you don't like the fact that you have tons of advertisements in your feed or that Facebook subjects you to what uh, advertisers are paying to go viral, right? The fact is if you give users freedom and you give developers freedom, you have a lot more choice, you have a lot better products that actually emerge, right? A lot more competition, a lot more experimentation. You have much lower prices, more actual economic growth and more jobs that are created as a result. So that's blockchain in a nutshell. Hopefully now you have some idea of why it's equally important, exciting, and really difficult to explain. That's really just the tip of the iceberg though, so if you want to know more about public and private blockchains, smart contracts, or anything else, check out our coverage on PCMag.com.